What's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to another one. So now that Update 41 is officially launched with uh, PC, yesterday, if you're watching this, today is Tuesday, March 12th. Um, I wanted to go ahead and start releasing some build videos. So there are little things that definitely changed with Update 41, but what I will say is a lot of the gear options are gonna be pretty similar. The other thing is I was making a lot of Infinite Archive specific builds last time. I want to give y'all just straight up everyday gameplay builds, okay? The other thing is I'm only going to give you guys builds that I play on a very regular basis or quite literally every day. There's, I have seven characters right now and I play about like somewhere between like seven and ten builds consistently. So you'll see like a lot of these build websites and stuff that have one bar stamina arcanist one bar magicka arcanist you know two bar stamina arcanist two bar magicka arcanist tank healer pvp like just all of that stuff i don't play all of that right i know how to build for that i know how to play all of that very well but i'm playing builds like the one that i'm going to be talking about today specifically because i find them to be really good they're really fun they're really effective um, I use them in pretty much every bit of content that I can, and I have a blast playing them. So I don't want to give y'all a build unless I find it really fun and engaging and, and effective, ultimately, right? So today we're going to be talking about my one bar stamina arcanist. I used to main a Templar. This is my main now. Um, I feel like Templar has been kind of ignored by Zoss over time. I still love Templar, but there's just not any like worthwhile changes that are that have been coming lately there definitely weren't any changes pretty much at all um minus some stuff to power of the light and um the status effect changes that came with update 41 but because of that i just you know i kind of transitioned over to arcanist and i've really been freaking loving it especially one bar it's just absolutely incredible so i do want to go ahead and just hop right into it and get this video rolling we're going to start with the character sheet Okay, we've got 15k max magicka, 22.1k max health, 29.7k max stamina, recoveries are at 718 for magicka, 822 for health, and 1369 for stamina recovery. Weapon damage is almost 6k, weapon crit is 49%, penetration's 5600, and then you've got your resistances at 19 for spell and 18.2 for physical. We've got all 64 points into stamina because we are stamina arcanists. And we are using the Arteum Takeaway Broth. This is going to give you max health, health recovery, max stamina, and stamina recovery. You use literally whatever you want to use. So this is kind of expensive food. Um, the gold food is going to have recoveries for both and max stats. If you go down to like Dubious, Kamor, and Throne, you'll get max health, max stamina, and stamina recovery. And then there's also buy stat food. It's all whatever you want to do. If you can sustain really easily, then I would just use buy stat food and it's not going to be a problem, right? I'm sure you can see kind of what we're using based on all these buffs, but we are using the thief. The thief's going to give you some weapon and spell critical strike rating. That's going to be absolutely awesome. Um, I will say we are using largely medium armor and I do a lot of group activity on this build. If you are solo, you're going to need this to be lover. Um, the lover is going to give you more penetration and penetration is by far your most important stat for doing damage. If you don't have it taken care of from your group members, right? So you have tanks, you have healers that are constantly debuffing enemies. They're applying major breach, minor breach. Um, they've got all sorts of stuff to kind of strip the enemy's resistances down for you so that you can do as much damage as possible, which is why I use the thief, right? But if you are solo and you don't have people doing that, you are then in charge of applying major breach or minor breach, depending on what build you're using, um, and using the lever to get as much penetration out of this build as you can. Think about penetration as literally penetrating an enemy's armor so you can get to them and actually do damage, right? Um, the other thing is if you are, you could do this build very similarly for like a Magicka Arcanist and switch up some gear options and you could do more light armor and light armor is actually going to give you penetration, which is great. Medium armor is going to give you more damage overall, but you're going to get more penetration from, um, light armor. Okay. So the other thing is we are a dark elf. This is one of those things. I've made a video on this. If you want to be something else, be something else. It really doesn't matter. You could be Khajiit. 
you could be imperial you could be red guard like it, it doesn't matter what else there's not going to be a massive difference you could be orc orc is good especially if you're solo because you get the little passive healing but overall dark elf is pretty nice so you get max stats um so the one thing that i like about dark elf for most dps is you're actually going to be able to switch between magic and stamina builds very reliably so like if you get sick of stamina arcanus and you want to be ranged with your beam i guess you know you can pop over to, to a magic build very quickly um you get more weapon and spell damage as well flame resistance is nice like if you're in pvp fighting you know dks and stuff like that but um yeah max stats weapon and spell damage also side note i don't know why they haven't changed weapon and spell damage to just be like power or something like that it's kind of silly all right let's go ahead and hop into the gear so first we'll go over the sets kind of how to get them why i'm using them and then we'll get into traits and chance all that stuff okay so we are using on the front bar this is a one bar build by the way so let me unequip this so that's not confusing um, we are using Deadly. So Deadly is actually a PvP set. You can get this from um, Cyrodiil, I believe. So let's go to Set Items, PvP, Cyrodiil. We come down, and you'll see we've got Deadly. So you can get this from Rewards of the Worthy, or what I would recommend doing is just saving up and buying it. You can go to a Guild Trader and get it. Um, but this is one of the best sets in the game, especially for Arcanists and Templars. And I'll go over why. The two-piece gives us weapon and spell damage. You get a line of crit chance, another line of weapon and spell damage, and then it says it increases the damage of both your damage over time abilities and your channeled attacks by 15%. So, like, you know, on the Arcanist, we have the beam. Pragmatic Fate Carver is what I use. And that's, that's considered a channeled attack, right? With Templar, you have your jabs. It's the same exact thing. It's a channeled ability. So, Deadly... A lot of times for my builds and what I enjoy, this is going to be kind of our foundational set, right? I absolutely love it. I highly recommend it. Um, but if this is too expensive and you guys want to try using something else, um, I'll, I'll, you know, leave a comment below. I, there's a ton of sets that you can use instead of these sets here. I'll go over, I'll go over like a whole list of sets at the end that you can use instead of this. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're using dual wield daggers for this. We're using one piece slime craw on the helmet. We are using light just to get the extra penetrations, more critical, stuff like that. The one piece slime craw is going to give you a line of critical chance. Critical chance and critical damage is kind of like, like I said, like penetration obviously is like your most important stat. But outside of that, especially in group content, which since this is an MMO and a lot of people are primarily doing group content, this is going to be kind of your go to damage stat is crit chance, right? And critical strike and all that. Um, slime crawl is a monster set so monster sets are two piece sets that come from two different things okay so you go to your dungeons your dlc or your base game and you defeat the last boss on veteran so if you go to wayrest sewers and you go to wayrest sewers one specifically on veteran and you defeat the last boss you will get either the light the medium or the heavy helmet and it is curated so no matter what at the most it's going to take you three runs a veteran way rest one to get the helmets you could also do the shoulders instead but the shoulders are going to be slightly harder to get so if you go to the undaunted enclave which you can see there's one here in way rest it's in any of the major capital cities so mornhold and deshaun um elden root and grotwood or um way rest and stormhaven you're going to see this little symbol down here it's called the undaunted enclave when you're level 45 you start getting daily quests to do like these dungeon quests every day. There's going to be three of them. Two of them are going to be base game dungeons. One's going to be a DLC dungeon. And when you do them, your reward is basically just transmute geodes, XP gold, and you get undaunted keys. You can get these undaunted keys, purchase these special chests from the vendors there, and that allows you to have a chance at getting the shoulder pieces. This has been kind of a pain point because they're not curated and it can take many, many, many keys to do this. So often times, if I'm doing a one bar build, I just do the helmet. Now I've been playing for a while. I have a lot of the shoulders naturally, but if you're just getting into the game, I would, I would definitely recommend just going in and doing this on veteran, getting the helmets. It's going to take you so much less time and so much less stress, <laughs> but yeah, this is the best one piece bonus that you can get out of any monster set in the game in my mind for um for damage 
Now, if you want something else, you can use something else. Just go through all of these dungeon sets and look at the one piece bonus. So Tremor Scale here gives you more max stamina. So that's nice. Grothdar gives you max magicka. You know, you can just go through, you get more recovery with Stormfist. Like whatever you need, do that ultimately. Um, that's that's what's gonna matter. I wanted more damage out of this, so I used Slime Crawl, but you use whatever you think is good, okay? The next set that we're using is Aegis Collar. So this is gonna be where, you know, once we go over this and we go over O Console, which is our one bar ring, this is where we're gonna start saying, okay, here are the other options, all right? So hang with me. So Aegis Collar is a really, really good medium set um, that you get from a dungeon called Unhallowed Grave. It is a DLC dungeon. You do not have to do this on Veteran. You can go in here on Normal and farm it out. You'll notice that there are no um, staffs, right? It's one of the sets that you have very specific pieces. And you'll see why that is when we look at the proc chance, okay? So the two piece gives us weapon and spell damage, three piece is crit chance, four piece is weapon and spell damage, five piece says when you deal critical damage with a martial melee attack, I know that's a lot, but we'll go over it. Summon a lesser Aegis for 11 seconds. After two and a half seconds, the lesser Aegis spins its blades, dealing about 4k bleed damage every second. This can occur once every 12 seconds and scales off the higher of your weapon or spell damage. So this set is amazing. Let's go over what it's, what it's saying. When you deal critical damage, so that's our first condition, we have to deal critical damage in order to proc this effect. Summon a, or I'm sorry, with a martial melee attack. So you have to be in melee range. This is why you can't use a staff with this set because you won't be able to reliably proc it. You have to be in melee range, right? So when you deal critical damage with a martial melee attack, that's pretty much any physical attack, right? Any poison bleed, like any of that kind of stuff. And you're dealing critical damage, you're gonna summon a Lesser Aegis. The Lesser Aegis is kind of like the, um, it looks like the big, the big like four-armed guy that spins around with swords and stuff that you see in like Hughes Bane. The thing about it is that it is stationary. So if you are in a boss fight that is very, very mobile, this set's not gonna be that great. In dungeons, a lot of times, this is more than this is more than fine, and I have an absolute blast. But if you're doing fights like trifecta runs and like all this stuff, or you're the type of person that runs around a ton, this set's not going to do you that much good, because this requires you kind of holding your ground a little bit, taking the heat, blocking, roll dodging, because you want the enemies to stay right on top of your lesser ages whenever you spawn, it, right? Otherwise, this set is a dud. I mean, you get the medium armor effects from it, you get the traits, you get the enchants, but if you're not taking advantage of this Lesser Aegis and you're running around all over the place, this is not going to do you any good, okay? So I'll go ahead and just kind of get into some other options for gear real quick. Okay, so one of the things that I want to say is if you are one of the people that is like just starting out, Maybe you don't have a lot of stuff in there. I would highly, highly, highly recommend Order's Wrath. Order's Wrath is a very, very easy um, to craft, crafted set. So it will require High Isle or a buddy that can make the armor for you, ultimately. It's gonna give you crit chance, weapon and spell damage, crit chance, crit chance, and it's gonna increase your critical damage and critical healing by 8%. This is, in my opinion, this is the best crafted set that you can get for a DPS by a long shot. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. You just get a ton of critical chance, right? So this would be one of the options that I would say. If you don't feel like using Deadly, you don't want to pay for it, or if you don't want to um, go farm out on Hollowed Grave, maybe you don't have the DLC, or that's not your style of gameplay. Order's Wrath is just going to increase your critical damage. So no matter what you're doing, you're just doing more damage, right? The one thing I will say that a lot of people see sets like this and they're like, oh, I'm not doing that good. If you're not really good at your rotation, you're not gonna get the most out of this set. It's gonna crank up your critical damage and all of that stuff, but you have to be dealing damage. Like you have to be doing as much as you can baseline to get the most out of the set. So if you're light attacking three times and then you're using an ability here and there and all that, and you haven't really learned your rotation, you're not gonna get as much out of this set. So that's why a lot of people kind of generally tend to go towards proc sets like Aegis Collar because it does a lot of the work for you. Now, one of the most popular proc sets that you can actually go to 
comes from another DLC dungeon called Falkreath Hold. There is a set in here, a medium armor set. I'm sure most of you have heard of it by now. It's called Pillar of Nern. Okay, so you get two lines of crit chance, weapon and spell damage, and then you have one of the easiest proc conditions of all time. Okay, when you deal damage, that's it. You can use any weapon, you can be at any range, you can use any ability, light attacks, heavy attacks, you can bash, like it doesn't matter. If As long as you deal damage, you will proc this set. You create a fissure underneath the enemy after a second, dealing 5,600 bleed damage to all enemies within two and a half meters. So if you have a bunch of enemies clumped up around the person that this is procking on, that bleed damage is going to hit all of them, okay? Causing them to bleed for an additional 19k bleed damage over 10 seconds, okay? So not only is it easy to proc, it has a small radius, but it can still be AoE if the enemies are stacked and your tank is doing a lot of good work for you. But it's also sticky, so if they decide to run all over the place like cockroaches and just, you know, go all over the room, you're good. So that's why this is often recommended by a lot of content creators and a lot of people, because it's extremely easy to proc, it's very reliable, it does a ton of damage, and it has a sticky dot, or a sticky damage over time, meaning it sticks to them if they move around and run away. So that's nice. So this set is typically more reliable than Aegis Caller, um, if you like it, but if your fight is relatively stationary or you're consistently keeping your enemies on top of the Lesser Aegis, I get more damage out of Lesser Aegis and I enjoy it more, okay? Um, so keep that in mind. Alright, so now let's hop back into a couple things. I do want to go over Oaken Soul really quick. So, Oaken Soul is a mythic ring. So, it's kind of... I, I made a video about this, but... It's kind of annoying that Antiquities is not a base game feature yet. I think it, I think it really should be, but you're going to need Greymore, the Greymore DLC or ESO Plus in order to have access to Antiquities. And then you're also going to need the High Isle expansion in order to capitalize and actually use the leads and dig up the leads to get Open Soul. Okay, so all Mythic items require five leads. They're going to have a variety of things that you have to go do. Like, one of the things you have to do is farm Volcanic Vents in High Isle. And you have a chance for one of the leads to drop, which you can then dig up in High Isle, right? So, I will leave a guide on how to get this um, down in the description below, if you are interested. But, this is ultimately the foundation of any one-bar build. So, it says, while equipped, you are unable to swap between your primary and backup weapon sets. So, you're locked into one bar, right? But, as a result, you get all of these buffs. Okay, so Minor Berserk, Minor Courage, Major Brutality, Major Sorcery, yada, yada, yada. You guys can see all of this, right? So what I want to say is if you don't want to use one of the skills that I'm using, that's fine. But what I would highly recommend is that you look at your skills. And if one of your skills is basically like the point of that skill is giving you one of these buffs, don't use it. Because you're getting so many different buffs covered by Oaken Soul. That's kind of why I've chosen the skills that I've chosen, because they're giving me either a ton of damage or they're giving me something that this ring does not, okay? So now let's go ahead and go into the traits. We're using a flame damage enchant with a Nernhone trait on our first dagger, our main hand. And we're using a poison damage enchant with a charged trait on the offhand, okay? All of the gear is going to be max stamina and divines, including our light helmet. We're doing one light helmet. The rest of the body is going to be medium. We're doing deadly shoulders to fill in that spot. So slime car helmet, deadly shoulders, Aegis collar on the body. And then we're doing a necklace, a ring, and the weapons as deadly. All of the jewelry is going to be weapon and spell damage and bloodthirsty. That's going to give you the most damage. Okay. All right. Let's hop into the skills. Very, very easy. Okay, first ability here is going to be Sephiliarch's Flail. This is going to be from Herald of the Tome. Third ability down, you're going to get Abyssal Impact, turn it to Sephiliarch's Flail. You're going to infuse your arm with Abyssal Magic to form tentacles that lash out at your foes, dealing 9,100 physical damage. It heals you, which is nice, and generates Crux. So the big purpose of being an Arcanist is you're generating Crux. Crux are like those little green triangles that you see floating around Arcanus, and you're going to want to generate three of those prior to using a Crux Spender. 
So you have Crux Builder uh, spells, and then you've got Crux Spender spells. You're also going to immobilize enemies and mark them with Abyssal Ink for 20 seconds. So these are going to deal 100% more damage to enemies with less than 50% health as well. Okay, looks like this. You've probably seen a lot of people using it, but you're going to basically use that three times. So one, light attack, two, light attack, three. And then by that point, you're going to have three crux. The reason you don't see it on me right now is because I'm not actually hitting an enemy with it. Okay, but then once you have three, you're going to use your B. Okay, that's basically the gameplay loop. Our other three abilities down here you're going to just simply reapply and keep them up, but that's your gameplay loop. Keep those three abilities up, and then flail, light attack, flail, light attack, flail, until you have three crux. Sometimes you only have to do it twice, and then beam, right? So, big old beam. We've got Pragmatic Fate Carver. Again, we're going to come down to Herald of the Tome. Recently, in Update 41, this is kind of the big change for Arcanist. This ability got nerfed by 7%. That's it. 7% is going to be completely unnoticeable to pretty much everybody, okay? The other thing is, Pragmatic Fate Carver specifically gives us a big damage shield. And that got nerfed, I believe, about like 15 to 17%. A way to circumvent this, I never was doing this before, I was actually using a CP node called Celerity. Celerity gives you 10% um, extra movement speed. I stopped using that and instead I now use Bastion and you're going to get 15% more effectiveness um, out of your damage shield, which includes the shield that comes with Pragmatic Fate Carver. So I basically just nullified that nerf. So it's totally fine. I lost some movement speed, but come on. Not a big deal. But anyways, let's go ahead and read it. Harness pure knowledge into a beam of energy that scars the world in front of you. Channel the beam for up to 4 seconds, dealing 4600 magic damage every 0.3 seconds. While channeling, you also get the damage shield. If you do the other morph, you're going to get slightly more damage, but you don't get the damage shield. I do a lot of pugging. The reason that I'm using this is because I tend to not want to rely on tanks or healers in my pugs. Because if you do that, you're going to be sorely disappointed when you have a fake healer, when you have a fake tank, you have new players that are learning how to do it that aren't able to heal you as efficiently or effectively as a veteran player, yada, 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 right? Um, yeah, so basically this is saying at the bottom, if you use this with Max Crux, you're going to get more damage out of it. It's not going to cost as much. So you always want to use this when you have three Crux, okay? Third ability is Quick Cloak. Come down to Dual Wield. It's going to be the fourth ability down. Blade Cloak, turn it into Quick Cloak. You can use whatever morph you want, okay? So if you want to use Deadly Cloak instead, go for it. I like Quick Cloak. This is just a nice little um, dual wield ability. It gives us Major Evasion, which reduces damage from area attacks by 20%. Deals good uh, physical damage to all enemies around you. And then this specific morph is going to give us Major Expedition as well for 4 seconds every time we use it. So it's a nice little movement buff, right? If you use Deadly Cloak, you're going to get a little more damage out of it. But I like Quick Cloak. Fourth ability. We're going to come down to Fighter's Guild. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what this is, but Barb Trap. Okay. So this is going to be in melee range as well. You basically put down your trap. Looks like this. And you want to make sure that the enemy actually stands in it. Now, we are not using this for the, um, for the buff that you get. So you can see in this second paragraph here, when triggered, the trap deals 7,000 bleed damage and an additional almost 21k over 20 seconds. That's why we're using it. We're using it because it's one of the best single target damage over time abilities in the game. The next part, now if we weren't using Oaken Soul, this is an additional benefit that's fantastic, but we have Minor Force covered by Oaken Soul. So it grants you Minor Force, which increases your crit damage by 10% for the duration, which is great. Not just to that enemy, but just in general, right? Enemies hit by the initial hit are afflicted with the hemorrhaging status effect, all right? Enemies who activate the trap, unless you're like a boss or something, are immobilized for two seconds, right? Last ability. Let's come all the way up here. Again, we're gonna be in Herald of the Tome. Come down here to the fourth ability. We're gonna be using Inspired Scholarship. Tome Bearer's Inspiration, turn it into Inspired Scholarship. Etch a series of runes onto your weapon that pulse with power once every three seconds. Each pulse enhances your class abilities, like the beam and, and the um, Sophiliarch's Flail, like these guys. Okay, And striking an additional enemy with one deals an additional 
40, almost 4,200 magic damage and generates Crux if you have none. Okay. While slotted on either ability bar, you get Major Brutality and Sorcery. We already have that covered by Open Soul. So the main thing here is it generates Crux and allows us to deal a little bit more damage with our class abilities, right? Looks like this. This is the cool ability where you kind of get the glowing green effects on your weapons, right? All right. Last ability is going to be our ultimate. You'll never guess it's in Herald of the Tome as well. Okay. Languid Eye. This is going to be the big floating watcher that goes over your head. Looks like this. Pretty cool. Does a shit ton of damage. That's why we're using it. All right. Let's go ahead and read it. Tear open the fabric of the Orbis to summon a scion of Hermaeus Mora. This being cast forth, wait, this being cast forth a beam that rends asunder reality. It's like, like the most intense introduction to a skill I've ever read. For six seconds that deals 6,200 magic damage to enemies within five meters every half second and snares them by 50% for three seconds. Every half second, the beam's damage increases by 7%. There you go. All right. Um, passives. Okay, you're going to get all of your class ability passives. Um, I know some people will go really in-depth into the passives. I also know that a lot of y'all don't really care. So if you're interested, if you have any questions about the passives, please leave a comment below. But I'm just going to go ahead and knock out this part because I know a lot of y'all don't care too much. Um, so get Herald of the Tome, Soldier of Apocrypha, and Curative Rune Forms passives. You're going to get the dual wield passives, light and medium armor passives. You're going to get the Fighter's Guild passives, Undaunted passives. If you want the mount speed bonus, get that one out of two continuous attack down there. Get all of your Dark Elf skills. And then for Alchemy, I would just get Medicinal Use. Okay. That's pretty much it for the passives. Let's hop into Champion Points and then we'll do Fashion and get y'all out of here. I'm not going to bother with the Green Tree. There's nothing that even remotely affects combat in that, so just do whatever you want. In the Blue Tree, we are using... Wrathful Strikes for more weapon and spell damage. Biting Aura for more um, damage done with our AoE attacks. Thaumaturge for more damage with our damage over time attacks. And then we are using Exploiter, which is going to give us more um, damage done against enemies that are off balance. If you don't have a way or like a reliable way of making sure that you're doing damage with... Um... Let me rephrase that because I just literally had like word vomit. Okay, if you don't have somebody that is reliably proccing off balance for you in your group, then don't bother with that, right? That's going to be a dud. Use either Master at Arms or Deadly Aim, whichever one you prefer. If you're going to be doing more direct damage, do that. If you want more single target damage, do that, okay? Um, Red Tree, I'm using Boundless Vitality for more max health, Fortified for more armor, Bloody Renewal for 1,500 stamina every time you kill an enemy. And then Bastion. If you don't really care about the nerf to the shield, you can use Rejuvenation if you want. This is going to be like literally 90 recovery, which is like nothing. So I just don't even bother with that most of the time. You could also use Celerity like I was using um, if you want a little bit more damage. But that's it. Let's go ahead and hop into the Fashion real quick. All right. All right, all right. We are using the Stags of the Zen Helm. That's going to be the Heavy Helmet. The chest is going to be Ifray's Will Jack. That's the medium Ifray's Will. Shoulders, we're using Hide Shoulders. The gloves, we are using the heavy Ifray's Will Gauntlets. The belt, we are using the Ifray's Will Girdle. The legs, we are using the Ifray's Will Skirt. The feet, we are using Ifray's Will Sabatons. And then the daggers we are using are the Narayanith Daggers. The Narayanith daggers came as a part of the Narayanith weapons pack in the crown store. This is not something you can earn in game, unfortunately, but I think they're pretty cool, right? The Ifray's Will style is something that drops from Earth and Root Enclave. You're going to get the greatest chance to earn these if you do veteran hard mode, but these do drop on normal. So the higher the difficulty, the higher the drop rate, right? And then the helmet is going to be Stags of Zen. This is the same thing as Earth and Root Enclave, but in Layer of Marsalak instead. All of these, everything on the body that I'm using, you can buy in the guild store. You don't have to run Layer of Marslock. You don't have to run Earth and Root Enclave if you don't want to. The um, die that I'm using is Cold Harbor Ash Black. Okay, that's it. That is pretty much it, dude. If you guys have any questions, let me know. If you guys need any more gear options, I didn't give you enough maybe, let me know. Um, but yeah, this is, this is my favorite build by a long shot. 
I absolutely love it. I use it all day, every day. This is my new main. I highly recommend you all give it a try. If you want to just shred through dungeons, trials, whatever, this is it. Seriously. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, hope to see you in the next one. Peace.